So it's uh, all for play for still. I think so. Do you want to bet against us? Everybody and welcome to For the Love of Paul McGrath podcast FA Cup edition for the FA Cup team sheet tantrum Aston Villa versus Middlesbrough. I've done literally nothing today other than sit down and watch football from about half past 11 this morning. And it's been really, really uh, enjoyable just relaxing with the young lad beside me and just watching football. Started off watching Serie A and then got into watching um, FA Cup. And now it's going to be our turn in just over an hour's time, Paddy, and we get to watch Villa then. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I think the the day, the morning I've had has really, really made me look forward to this game today. So, um, yeah, let's let let's let's hope Aston Villa and let's look. I suppose look forward to the team and hope Aston Villa bring a performance with them today. And I'm absolutely certain that they will. Well, I'm glad you. Uh... I'm glad you saw so much football today. I, I saw a little bit of the Newcastle game as I was having my lunch in between, taking down Christmas decorations and changing light bulbs and doing all the things I need to do before I go to the pub to watch this game. So, <laughs> so that's where my game came. My day went. Um, I haven't really thought about the game today, other, other than the fact, <clears throat> and I noticed very quickly in the few minutes that I watched the Newcastle game is. It's going to be frantic and there's no VAR, so when the goal goes in, we'll be celebrating. <laughs> There'll be nobody calling back for it to see if, if uh, anyone was offside in the build-up. And for that reason, and, and Del Boy, who was always in the comments, messaged me earlier and went, a little bit worried about the high line today because they need to put up the flag. <laughs> so let's see how that works in, 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 uh, in, in let's call it, real football <laughs> before they really... That's true. Play. Yeah, so... That, that is true about the, about the high line today and so on. But um, yeah, as I say, I expect Aston Villa to even go to the Riverside today, to or or as uh, as somebody called it, the BT Cell Net, which I just closed my eyes and I immediately thought of Christian Carambo, uh, Ravinelli, um, Juninho. <laughs> oh, yeah, what? Hmm. Is it still called that? I don't. Th- I don't know. I don't know. It's surely not called the BT Cell Net Stadium. A, B- a BT even still going. Like it's well, selling yeah, it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the Riverside Stadium. Anyway, but I'm I'm looking forward to it. And I think we'll go there today. I think Villa will try and put their foot in the ball and uh, and play a possession based game away from home today. Um just like as I say, the the, the team will dictate. And and the more I think about this, Paddy, since our preview, I think there'll be more players in this team than we probably um, expected, you know, there's always the like. Even since we did the t- the the preview, you know, we've I've had DMs. I've had it's been on t- people people messaging on Twitter, you know, comments in, on the on the video afterwards. And thanks so much for everybody who does comment. You know, some it's very much split. That some people are like, yeah, let's go for the FA Cup, and then you've got other people who are uh, are saying that maybe we can't compete on three fronts. And I can completely understand that. And you've got other people who are saying scrap off the FA Cup and let's play our under 13 team who cares um and you know it's just it's 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 i suppose it's uh, interesting to see the 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 three different camps that people are are, are kind of settled in uh, Unai Emery came out yesterday and said that the Stevenage game last season was a bit of a low point for him um and uh, I presume he doesn't want to repeat that. So I'd imagine that we'll see probably see more players than we thought. Albeit he did rattle off a list of injuries and a list of players that we won't have, namely Pau Torres and Yuri Tielemans, who I thought will be back in contention for this today. But as they won't, I think uh, the team will probably pick itself a small a bit easier now, Paddy. Yeah, well, look, there's no there's no point in rushing Tielemans and, and Torres back after what we've learned about what happened last weekend with. Uh, with Longley feeling ill and having to come off and Pau Torres being rushed back in. And that's always a worry. Someone rushes back and you set the whole thing back five or six weeks and we don't want that to happen. So um, I hope they got plenty of rest. Um, I hope they're resting up for another week and be and be ready for, for Everton next week. And I don't mean that in a way that I, I, I'm not bothered about the FA Cup. I want us to win every game. I want us to turn up and do our best in every mm-hmm. single game that we're in. That's just the fan that I am. That doesn't mean that anybody who says this isn't important is wrong. That doesn't mean that if someone says rest everybody for next week is wrong. 
it's just we're all different. We're all we're all wired different, and I want us to win everything, regardless of who goes out on the pitch. Um, and that goes for our underage teams and our women's team and everybody that that wears wears a an Aston Villa crest on their short. So I hope it's a, I hope it's a strong enough team to go and beat Middlesbrough. I I couldn't tell you how strong that needs to be or how strong we can afford it to be. But we we the the, the problem is is we don't have the bodies in order to rest a whole lot of players. So I would imagine it is going to be quite strong. Yeah, like I, yeah, I, I think it would be. I think there'll be a pretty decent team there. Um, and, and look, as I say, it'll be it'll be announced in less than a minute again, in less than a minute now. But I think one of the big talking points today really has been about John Duran, Paddy. Um, as everybody here knows, I'm not going to get into the whole deleting his Instagram stuff. Um, I, to me, I, I couldn't care less if he set up five different Instagram accounts, one for his arse, one for his two arms, one, and one for his two legs. I couldn't care less. But um, what I do care about is the fact that the rumours are beginning to kind of circulate more and more about potentially him um, you know, leaving the club. And whether they are true or not, or whether it is that whether it is the case whereby that there's been a disagreement between himself and I Emery, if that is the case, like uh, it's not it's not beyond the realms of possibility, and specifically with this manager, that if you do have a falling out with them, that you never get back into the team again. He doesn't seem yeah. like the type of manager to have a bomb squad, you know. And I we probably have our team up here, and that's what I. Uh, no, it's not up just yet. I don't think. Um, here it is now. It's on the way, but our starting eleven is here. Um and Duran is starting. That was uh, that was where I was building up to. Let's see if Duran starts with this because there's been a lot mentioned today about himself and Uda Emery having a tete a So he does start today. But Emmy Martinez is in goals. Cash Conza, Longley, Alex Moreno, uh, McGinn, Kamara, Dendonker, Jacob Ramsey, Bailey, and Duran. And that's as strong as that's. You know, there's no Tim, no young Tims in there. He's on the bench. The bench is very, very strong as well. He's got Marshall, Proctor, Diego, Carlos, Douglas, Louise, Watkins, Diaby, Zaniolo, and young Tim in there as well. So, like, it's not littered with the under 18s or the under under 23s, like some people wanted. And, and I think you, Una Emery probably telegraphed this. We've only got four games, potentially four. Well, four games, potentially four games in um. In the month of uh, January, and I think Gunnar Emery said, well, listen, there's going to be plenty of break here for these guys here. Obviously, the big thing here is that we don't want anybody to, anybody to get injured today, but I'm happy. I'm very happy with that team. You've got Alex Moreno getting a run out, getting uh, minutes back into the legs again. You've got the likes of uh, Jacob Ramsey getting more minutes into the legs. And, uh, you know, you've got the Donker, Kamara, McGinn in there in midfield as well. So we'll have that tight box in midfield here. And I expect us to go to Riverside, as I said today, and really put our foot in the ball today and uh, and play football um, and, and boss possession, Paddy. Mm. And <coughs> I, I'm happy because we, we've got Conza back in at right centre back. Uh, Cash is back in there and he's he's ready to go and he's the main man in the in the photograph. Diego Carlos sits it out having had not a great game last weekend. Same goes for Douglas Luiz. Same goes for Ollie Watkins who was pr- pretty ineffectual apart from obviously setting up the, the two goals, but uh, didn't see an awful lot of the ball. So freshen up a little bit. Give those guys a break. Um, hopefully. We get to see the likes of Zaniolo, the likes of Young Tim, uh, come in and, and get some uh, some minutes in the legs as well, um, because we are going to need them in the, in this slog, which is which is going to be the run in. So, um, you know, we're we're six we're six days into January and we haven't had a sign in yet, so we have we have to just back what we have here. And I don't think you're going to see Duran go out. I never got to answer your question because you kept going, but I don't think we see Duran go out until there's adequate replacement come in. Now. I do believe he's a lot of growing up to do, both on the pitch and off the pitch, and that's going to take time. He's still on, he's still only a young kid, so um, whatever he does on his social media is his social media, and he's entitled to do whatever he likes. But just needs to grow up a little bit, not be not be in the spotlight, other than putting the ball in the back of the net, which is what we want him to do. So hopefully, big opportunity for him today to come in and. Uh, set this game alight and, and hopefully get a goal because that's that's what we all want. We all want to see him do well. I don't want to see him to go to AC Milan. I want to see him stay here and score goals. That's yeah. you know we've we've got a bargain on on a, on a player from Colombia who obviously is a great talent and a lot, lots of people wanted him. And if AC Milan are interested in him, that means there's something there. So let let's hope he can, he can uh, get a shit together today and get a goal. 
Yeah, I think so too. And look, I think it's sitting up for him today. He's, you know, he's been dubbed on Twitter the chaos agent whenever he comes in. Um, you know, he does like to get around the field, and you can see that youthful exuberance that he does have. So more power to him um, in the, in the the lineup today, and hopefully he does get a goal. I'm gonna try and get the Middlesbrough team in a moment, but a couple of people asking where Pau Torres is. Uh, Unai Emery had said yesterday Pau won't be involved this week, uh, just purely out of precaution. Um, he came on last week, uh, but wasn't feeling great afterwards. You know, there was there was still a bit of soreness or tightness. Um, so they said they were going to give him a break for for this week, just to just to rest it up a small bit more. Um, so that's that one. Um, I think really for me, Paddy, the big, the big, the, the one player I think I probably would have almost put my house on that would have started today would be Zaniolo, but he hasn't, and he's on the bench. And I would imagine, you know, you mentioned him there, I think he's probably going to come in. Well, uh, uh, he definitely will come in today uh, at some stage, but probably would have liked to seen him in there, but you can see here Unai Emery ain't messing around, and he's going for this competition. Or he's going for this round anyway, at least, um, and see what comes. And I yeah. think the reason for that is because we only have uh, potentially four games in the month of January. And uh, the Wellington Valley says here, surprise Bailey starts, to be honest, thought he would be rested. I did too. But on the other hand, I'm saying to myself, um, it, it is a situation where we have this player who's on fire. Why drop him when when he's playing well? So leave leave him in there. Let, let him get more uh, kudos for what he does today, hopefully. And uh, yeah, he'll, 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 um, he'll be flying for next week. Um, January is, is, is a strange month. We win today, and the most we play in in, in the month is, is four games, which is great. What we don't want today, above all else, is to draw the game, because we could do without that extra fixture before we have to uh, before we have to play the likes of Newcastle and Everton. So um, there's one more in there as well as there, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think the, the fourth round is in there as well, isn't there? If we win the if we win if today, we win, yeah. yeah, 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 that's the yeah. one. Um, um, interesting one from from Middlesbrough today. Well, like this is their team. We're not going to go down down through the team in too in too much detail. Not out of uh, an abundance of disrespect or anything like that. But I'm going to be really honest. There's a lot of players in the team I don't know a whole pile about. But the guy that's that, that's been highlighted here, the captain Hayden Hackney, um, is starting for them today, midfielder. And um, there was a spurious link to him to between him and Aston Villa. Um, online last night, and then it began yeah. snowballing, oh, and then it went yeah. all completely quiet. Um, so I'm going to be interested in looking at him today, a midfielder, kind of a, um, a, a an all round midfielder in there as well. So he's been named captain for today. Um, obviously there's no finish as, but uh, uh, you know we'll take this team as we see it. There's guys in there like Sam Greenwood, um, in there Coburn as well, um, and and what's his name? Is it uh, Rogers? I can't remember his first name. Is it Matt or Mark uh, Rogers in there as well? And then their centre half who brings the bit of experience there is Matt Clark as well, number five. So look, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing this seeing this Middlesbrough team, but um. I'm, you know, this Aston Villa team's a strong Villa team to go out against this. But what do you make of that, Hayden Hackney? Have you seen anything of him, Paddy, or did you see those rumours last night too? I did see the rumours and a few people sent it to me, all right, and, and I, I googled them and tried to get as much information as I could. There's not a whole lot in the public domain to, to look at. Um, obviously, a talent that they, uh, they they see a great future for, especially put him out there as captain, given the the experience he has around him. It's 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 definitely a a, a homegrown player done well, and that's and that's why he's captain today. I said to you in, when we did the preview, Johnny House and and um, Young Kavanagh were the only ones I knew or could talk about in any way, and. Kavanaugh isn't even in the squad and Johnny Housen's on the bench. Um, I flashed up there just as you were putting up the Villa team. Somebody drew our attention to the fact that they are, in fact, playing Chelsea in a semi-final on Tuesday. And yeah. that, could be, that could be their priority for, for this. So um, I honestly can't tell you a whole pile about anybody else in that team other than if they're, dropping, if they're, if they're putting Johnny Housen on the bench, they're holding him back for Tuesday night. Yeah, and and uh, they've got a lot of injuries as well, you know. So they do have quite a lot of injuries uh, on their side too. So um, they've taken an opportunity, I suppose, really to play what they have. And and uh, as you say, they do have a big game, big high profile game as well on uh, Tuesday. They could have done without this game, I think, this weekend, or maybe if this game was the Friday night game, I think they could have done with that uh, to have extra extra lead in time to the Chelsea game but um, they don't and this is the team that they've put out and uh, they're a very young team 
And uh, in a way, that's that's a challenge in itself because you've got that exuberance, that attack, attack, attack mentality that they that they may very well have here playing at home uh, against a ro- with a raucous crowd behind them. Um, but Aston Villa are going there very professionally with a decent, more than decent team uh, out there, and uh, I still expect Villa to get a result. And 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 I know I don't like I'm not being disrespectful, but. You know, with the team that Villa have out there, I'd expect them to get a comfortable result today, uh, given given who they are, they they have out. Like essentially, realistically, from that starting eleven that they have out there, you're missing Paul Torres, uh, Douglas Luiz, and, and and Ali Watkins. That's that's really it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, anybody like you could, might say Diaby, but Diaby's a, a judgment call between himself and Bailey. Um, you know, you might say Dina, but like Alex Moreno is in there. You might say Kanza to to uh, to uh, right back, but Matty Cash is a right back as well. So. You know, the only ones that would be glaring emissions there for me would be Watkins, Pau Torres, and and Douglas Luiz um, within that starting eleven. So based on that, I I'm expecting Aston Villa to win by two goals today at least. Yeah, that's I have that in my head. To, yeah, I I would have said three one. I think I think we'll win. Uh, it won't be as handy as it looks on paper. Um, remembering that these guys will will come up as we've seen with the likes of Sheffield United, and it's a big cup final for them to go and and, and have a pop off a team who's currently sitting second in the Premier League. I think we're still second, are we? <laughs> I don't think that's changed. No. Um, so so we're the ones there to be shot at for once, and I would just like to see after eight long years of going out in the third round of the FA Cup that we have a <laughs> we have a decent run off this this year, and I'm sure. You know, it hasn't been mentioned in a very long time because we have uh, done so well in the league, but we have a cup specialist uh, managing our team and he won't want to go out in the third round as well, I'm sure. Absolutely. Yeah, like it, it, the reason I'm being confident, you know me, I come in here and, I, and, and I'm never really as, as confident about that, but Unai Emery has been very bullish about the Stevenage game last year. And yeah. the fact that, you know, he wants to put things right there. So the, so from that point of view, from everything that we know about how this t- how our team has played this season so far and what the manager has said, that's my reason for confidence. Not not the, the team that we're playing. I'm not saying that Middlesbrough are poor. I'm just saying that there's a different impetus put on, emphasis put on this game uh, by the manager and by the team that he sent out there. Now, will the players go out there and perform at 100% in this game? You know, there will, there, will there be a lethargic nature to it? Will VAR not being there be an issue? Who would have ever thought we might say that, Paddy? I don't think it would be, obviously. But, you know, all those things are very valid points that people make. And it's not a disrespectful mm-hmm. piece to, to Middlesbrough at all because I do know, like, there are some good players. Like, I'm really looking forward to seeing Hayden Hackney. I'm really looking forward to seeing Sam Green Greenwood there and, and, and Colbert too. You know, they've, they've spread their goals around their team. But it's the it's the way that Unai Emery is is uh, is is approaching this game. I think for me is is what gives me confidence um, mm-hmm. in, in in a win today. And look in the post match, I'm fully f- fully expecting or are comfortable with the fact that saying listen, I was expecting it based on on all the available evidence. Um, and if we're beaten one nil or five nil by mi- this Middlesbrough team, I'll be as pissed off as everybody else. You know, so. Um, it's uh yeah, it's it's an interesting one. Uh, the magic of the cup. We've already had already had a cup set already today, Paddy. I've seen somebody use that phrase. Um, it was at Maidstone uh, United, I think it was, um, uh, managed by George Ekelobi, Ekelobi, um, or whoever it was. I think beat beat some team today, and uh, I think yeah. <laughs> who did they beat? They beat Stevenage, so we don't have to worry yeah. about them in the fourth round if we get through. If we, if we're in the hat on Monday night, so that's exactly yeah. it. Thank God for that. Um, yeah. yeah, look, the the past eight years have me worried and, and rightfully worried because um, it becomes a habit when these things keep happening. And while, while we have other things at play and other things to worry about, it would be nice to get to an FA Cup final. By God, it would be really nice to bloody win the thing. Yeah. So a uh, huge crowd gone up there to Middlesbrough today. I hope everybody arrives safely because boy, if your roads are anything like they are in Ireland, you would have had a n- nice frosty morning heading off early up, mm. to, up to the northeast. So uh, hopefully they'll be um, hopefully they'll be uh, cheering us on to a win. And I will get, hopefully in two weeks' time, home draw 
against Birmingham City, and that's what I want. Birmingham is still winning, Benny. Birmingham is still winning. Somebody <laughs> put it up in there. G- Gig Sharma asks, are none of our youth players good enough for the bench? Whereas Kellyman and Caden Young? Um, well, Ke- Kellyman is injured, I think, at the moment. And he's just, or else just making his way back from injury. Um, so he did pick up an injury recently. I think with Caden Young, um, like Unai Emery has been upfront about this even last season, not just with Caden Young, but with our young players. He's not just going to throw young players to the lines for the sake of it. Um, there was times last year where we were looking for a Caden Young to be in the team or um, X or Z to be brought to be called up to the team. I suppose realistically, when he's looking at this, he's got two young goalkeepers on the bench. He's got Tim Eric Brunham uh, on the bench as well. Um, you know, uh, from that point of view, he has enough players to to, to put out on the bench. Um, and but I I thought Caden Young might be a call up for this one, but um, I think really Unai Emery has has been pretty steadfast in saying that you know he's not just going to throw them out there for the for the sake of it, exactly. um, which yeah. is something I didn't expect from him to be honest with you. But it's uh, it's the way he 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 said that last year, and I don't think that anything has really changed. No, um, and, and look, if you, even if you look at all the players we've been linked to, they're not young, not particularly young players. They're they're older, um, more experienced players that he obviously feels the squad is needing. Um, if 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 they are to be believed, that is, um, we've bought old players, older players in 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 the likes of Alex Moreno and stuff like that. So I think he he uh, leans a lot on experience as opposed to. Um, putting the young kids in there, especially if he doesn't feel they're up mm-hmm. to it just yet. So, um, look. Until until he does otherwise, and it will take a very long time for him to, to to mess this up. But he has my utmost faith in whatever he decides to do with with the with the young kids and everybody else within the club. So he's uh, he he's got our backing, um, regardless of how the game goes oh, yeah. today. You know, so um, it's it's uh, it's a hundred percent, a million percent better than we would have ever imagined to be sitting here on the fourth weekend in January, heading into the third round of the FA Cup, second in the league, still in Europe. You still have to pinch yourself and go, how the fuck has this happened? And it's amazing. So, look, enjoy it. Hopefully it's a three points. Doesn't matter how we get them. If it's 4-3, if it's 1-0, if it hits John McGinn's arse on the way in in the 90th minute and we win, that's all that matters. Get into the hat Monday night. Get the rest and recovery in for the week and a big game next weekend against Everton. So, uh, yeah, I'm going for a three-one win, and I'm very optimistic. And I think it's a strong team, and I would be bitterly disappointed if we lost. Yeah, I'm. I'm the same. I'm. I'm I, the reason that I, that I, as I said, I've everything on top of everything I've said previously is. I'm excited about the game today. I'm excited about the FA Cup. I've been watch. I've watched two FA Cup games today. I watched Verona versus uh, Inter earlier on today, taking a look at uh, uh, Cyril and Gange as the as the 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 announcer was uh, was pronouncing it. And maybe that's how you do pronounce it. But some of the stuff I I watched called him Ngonge, and uh, then when you look up the pronunciation of it on YouTube, it's Ngonge as well. So I, I don't know. And as I say, I hope he's not offended by how I pronounced it. But uh, just just from watching football all day today, I'm really into by Aston Villa recently and you know um I'm I'm getting swept up in the good in, in the the magic of the cup and I think the villa will go out and do the business today um for 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 sure I, I'm just I really do think that they will go out and do the business today because it's uh it just seems like there's a real professional attitude going out there today like we've seen in every game we've gone out with gone out in this season um anybody uh want to pop there their score results or their predictions in the chat there, and we'll get to them in a moment. Paddy, did you say you need to go now? Do you need to go early? Or, or, uh... I do. I do. Yeah, I have to go and catch a bus. Fine. <laughs> I'll leave you go, so, uh, um, and, I'll go tr- uh, and I'll continue on here. But uh, pop, stop popping your uh, your scores in there. We might finish up a little bit earlier. Um, Dale, as well, from um, from AVFC, AVFC Stato, is going to be doing the wa- live watch along as well. We will throw you guys directly into that. And then afterwards, he will throw you directly back into our post match, which will happen right in the final whistle of this game uh, later on. Come rail, hail, rain, hail, or shine. And we will join you again for that. But uh, Paddy, I'll let you go and get your bus, and we'll see you afterwards. Chat to you later up the villa. Bye bye. Oh, Birmingham bye-bye. won all now. Um, <laughs> yeah, Birmingham seem to be one all, says Paul Aston. Uh, at the moment, there is an equalizer there as well. Um, <clears throat> equalizer, yeah, with Hull Villa in 1982 confirming as well with that one. So let's take a little look at your at your scores there. MC says 2 1 Villa with KK going 5 1 Villa as well. Mike Richards says 3 0, and Jordan Levy's going with 3 1. Tyra is going with 3 0. Tom Ward is going 5 0. 
Um, Dicko Blanco going 2 0. Audrey's going for 3 1. Western Ood 2 0. Captain Nugget 4 1. 4 1 says Tom. And 6 0 says Dream Villain. 5 0 says Villa, Villa 1982. Alex Roberts 4 1. Villa 1982. Oh, that's the whole result. Uh, really random review says 4 1 Villa. Leo Waters says 2 0. Uh, Stephen Brown is going 3 0. Villa. Um, Kat Cannon is going 4 2. Villa 3 1 says David Styles. Greg O'Connor says 5 1. Brian York. Uh, says 3-1. John Steele is going 4-1. Colin Campbell is going 3-0. Standing on the Word says 4-1. David Dwyer goes 2-1. Michael O'Brien says 4-0. Ed McNeil goes 2-0. Uh, Venture, RA Venture is going with 2-0 two, two um, Villa. Bear in the Garden is going 2-0 Villa. 3-1 Villa says <coughs> says uh, Mad Villain. Dan Downey says 2-1. Oz Germ says 2-1 uh, to Villa. Dan Downey, you mentioned that you've got a lot of connections with Villa or with Limerick as well. Whereabouts in Limerick? If you've want to pop it in the comments there or DM me because uh yeah just an in interesting uh surname there that I used to be I I wonder well, used to be I am related to people by the name of Downey so I wonder I wonder are we distant relations Dan somewhere shape or form. Um Sniffrat is says one nil Villa Gene Taylor says three one Junior Bennett says three nil Pete Bam Bainbridge says three nil Anna Grady two one uh, for Nullig Naman here in Ireland. Uh, 2 0 uh, says Ali Oliver McGrath. 2 0 says Garrett McDonough. 2 0 says John Griffin. 3 0 says The Mitch Meister. 5 0 says Nacho Gaming. Uh, 1 all says Seth Justan. Um, Zanas says 3 0 Villa. 4 2 says Leighton Castle. Tracy Long says 2 0. 3 1. Uh, says uh, 3 0 says Justin W. 4 1 says Lily Tate uh, to Villa. Uh, 3 1 says T Lai. Uh, be happy goes 3 0. Um, mm, 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 3 1 says David Finn. And Neil is going to go. I'm going to go with a 2 0 win today for Aston Villa. I'm going to say a 2 0 win today. I think Duran gets a goal. And I'm going to say mm, McGinn. Why not? Why not, McGinn? Why not? Oh, Sean M is in with a 2 1 there as well. Um, yeah. Uh, in, in there with a two one, um, yeah. Look, as I say, it's 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 a great game today for Aston Villa. It's a great a good game to get in the third round of the FA Cup. I'm always torn between whether I want uh, a good challenge in the cup or whether I want a real minnow to come and uh, for for a magical game. And um, realistically speaking, you know, as long as you don't draw Man United in the third round, it's it's almost new territory for Aston Villa, whoever they draw, because we've got Man United so many times before. So I'm really really looking forward to this. And, uh, and 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 hopefully, um, it is uh, hopefully it's the win that we're looking for. And as I say, we will be back with a post match uh, podcast directly after this game as well. A couple of people, yes, I I'm not using the word cup set, mad villain. I'm certainly not. I saw I saw people refer to it on Twitter as cup set, and I I got the shiver down my back and I felt itchy straight away. That's uh, that's um, I won't be using it again. I was I was sarcastically using it earlier on. Uh, Gig Sharma asks. Um, how did Ngong, Ngonge and Gonj play today? Um, I think it was difficult. I think he was probably the only bright spark or one of one of two bright sparks I thought for Verona today. Difficult to play against that Inter team because they were so dominant as well. Verona were on the back foot an awful lot, but anytime he got the ball at his feet, I thought he looked very capable with the ball at his feet. Um, you know, there wasn't an awful lot of space for him, but um, they had a right back I thought was pretty decent, uh, Verona did, and they had a guy in, in central midfield who normally plays in a more attacking role, whose name I can't pronounce. It begins with a K. Uh, it begins with an F, I think. Um, he's a Nigerian guy, and he just tack his last-ditch tackles were absolutely amazing. Now, I didn't see much else from him, but uh, uh, yeah, interesting player. Interesting player there as well. But uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that one, tra that one transpires over the coming weeks, if there is anything in it. Um, not 100% sure, but I think Villa will be active uh, uh, will at least be trying in the transfer market, and I would expect to see at least one, uh, at least two players, I think, come through the door over the course of this uh, this transfer window, and maybe one or two players leave as well. But they're all for other podcasts, I think, in the future too. So um, I'm going to leave you guys at that. If you guys haven't noticed, I'm a bit low on energy today. I have a bit of a sore throat. I know I'm coming down with something. I've been, I feel like I've been sick for the last three weeks straight. Um, whenever I've been on the podcast, but um, I'm going to go and rest up the voice because I can feel my voice going. But thanks so much everybody we will be back with a post-match podcast directly at full time uh 
stay here if you're interested in watch along with Dale from AVFC Stato. Um, we will throw you directly into that. But in the meantime, rest up, watch this game, get your food, get your drinks involved, and we'll see you directly after the final whistle back again for a post-match pod. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and all that's left to say is up the villa. Yeah.